Be careful, Bob. Bob. How are you? I'm good. this evening, if you would uh, state your name and whatever uh, brought you here tonight, whatever concerns you have. Good evening. Um, Kim DeLoya. Um, I'm here um, on behalf of the EAEA and um, just some concerns that have been discussed at the last um, board meeting um, and also it got me out of the mandatory cheerleading meeting that I'm supposed to be at right now. So. That's always a plus. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anita Hand, EAEA. I just said, is there any night? Thank you. Jill Felina, I'm a product teacher in Northside, the other parent, and just visiting. Okay, so I teach first grade at Northside, and I'm just visiting. All right. Carl Cromer, you're a food service director, just visiting. Bob Cunningham, visitor. Christiana Rumo, I teach kindergarten at Northside. Stacey Hamilton, visiting. Can your students hear you guys? Because I only heard about, I think I heard two that came out all. They're, they're a little young. We have the wonderful surround system, so we can put our microphone on. Oh. Save our voices. Well, we have old ears. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 I'm sure that uh, the, what you were referring to was this uh, rumor that was being talked about, I guess, the end of last week about uh, the school board furloughing teachers and cutting the number of teachers and increasing class size. Uh, I think that, you know, what you have to realize it was a budget meeting and we uh, throw out all kinds of ideas. Um, we're facing a pretty sizable deficit and one of the responsibilities of the board is to uh, try and reduce that deficit uh, somehow and you know at the same time we're discussing uh, whether we were going to implement a tax increase so we 
throw out all kinds of ideas. And it was brought up that, you know, I guess in the context was that we were talking about a few different measures that were not really going to amount to a whole lot of money. And uh, a board mem member said that a way to cut significant amount of money towards this deficit is to increase class size and furlough teachers. It was not uh, uh, something that was uh, you know, voted on or it was brought up, it was uh, talked about that there was an option and uh, subsequently it was, uh, you know, there's no support for that. You know, can you say that there's not going to be support for that somewhere down the road? Uh, you know, who knows, uh, two years from now, three years from now, it, we'll have to see. I mean, we have a fund balance and we're uh, looking at the way that the, uh, the budget is proposed now. We're going to utilize the fund balance to uh, make ends meet. But, uh, you know, what happens down the road when the fund balance is exhausted? I mean, you may have to look at uh, some drastic measures like that and not saying that that's a timetable that we're on three years we're going to do this, but I mean, it's desperate times are going to call for desperate measures, and, and there will have to be, uh, at some point, uh, changes that are, are made. But I don't know if I'm making this any better or any worse, but the more I talk, the more I think I'm making it worse. But yeah, I mean, we're not sure where the, uh, the state funding is, uh, is going to be at this point. Um, so again, you know, we're uh, discussing different options, but there is no support for a measure that would further teachers and increase class size um, at this point in time. Not, no support whatsoever. So uh, I know that it obviously is a concern for teachers, for parents, for everyone, but uh, there is no support for that from this board. Not in the foreseeable future. May I re respond to that, please? Sure. Um, the only thing I would like to say is if the board would keep in mind that over the past few years that 17 teaching positions have been cut, a closing of a building has been made, and reflect upon that what's already been a loss um, when making this decision, um, even when it comes down to increasing classroom size, but always first and foremost should be what's best for the students of the Elwood City School District. Absolutely. And I think that. Uh the, the board's attitude is exactly the same. We're, uh, you know, money is, is tight, but we're not going to sacrifice what's best for kids to be able to uh, you know, make ends meet. I mean, we're going to do everything that we can in our power, and <coughs> that's going to affect kids in education is going to be the extreme last, last measure, and we're not to that point right now. Thank you. If I can add to it, too. Most of the board experience, maybe except for Renee and Matt, just because they just came on in the past year or two, feels that we've cut as far as we can cut. If we start cutting anymore, you're going to be cutting programs. We're not going to do that. Our, star, our primary aim here is to educate kids. And I think we've cut programs, the most programs we've cut. I don't think there's any more. I don't think there's any fat in the budget. Thank you very much. Go to revenue and finance. Usually, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yep. usually get the uh, principals to kind of give an update on what's going on in their buildings and uh, last month and coming up here towards the end of the school year. So we'll start with Mr. Lake. I'll be quick. In the fall, I provided, or Mrs. Pigs, I should say, and her newspaper staff provided a uh, copy of the school newspaper. Here's one for the spring. If you don't mind, Mr. Mancini, just reading those. Um, yes, sir. Tomorrow we'll finish AP testing with AP government. We started that last week. Um, we'll finish that tomorrow. On Wednesday, we start Keystone exams. We'll be algebra on Wednesday, literature on Friday, biology next Monday. Um, seniors finish their finals today. We'll start uh, calculating their um, academic results for commencement, which will be on June 2nd. So, there's, a, I'm sorry, there's extra right there. Um, as far as that, as we continue with our testing, Mr. Mancini, and uh, we're we'll finishing that up here real soon. So. Thank you. Mr. Keeley. Well, with apologies to Mr. Lake, we're done with the PSSAs in uh, Perry and Hartman. 
So now we get to experience those things that make school enjoyable and make memories for these kids. Um, we had fun fitness day at Perry, uh, presented by PTO. It was a great time. Kids had a really wonderful time. They got to play all day, run around. It was, it was amazing. Uh, the sixth graders are getting ready for the Olympics. They're having Olympic practice. The Olympics are next week, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, PTO brought another program to Hartman today. They brought the Rock and Robot program from the Carnegie Science Center. The kids enjoyed that. They were they were glued, so that was fun for them to see. And looking forward to the elementary band concert, which will be next Thursday. Again, memories for these kids. That's what they're going to remember in school after they're running these tests. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Mr. Gibson. Hey. Um, at Northside, we're finishing up our uh, end of the year testing, double testing, um, which is done mostly one on one with the exception of uh, a math and a close exercise that's done whole group. Um, so that takes some time. We are gearing up for four more letters training um, for our kindergarten <coughs> teachers, special ed teachers, and Title I teachers. Um, so that'll be four full days worth of training for Northside teachers. We have our fun fitness coming up that Mr. Keeley just described. So our little ones, they're not even sure what's, what they have to look forward to, but it's going to be really, really exciting. Um, we have a Title I audit, school-wide audit, coming to Northside um, tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, we have a hybrid walkthrough coming up where um, we're not looking at teachers. We're looking at rooms and how, what that hybrid learning setting is going to look like kind of getting some me measurements and looking at what kind of furniture we can repurpose and um, uh, what we can make do with and maybe a few things that we might need. Um, and just a lot, of, a lot of fun things. The field trips are going to be really exciting. We had a great PTO meeting um, recently and um, we've had probably, I don't know the exact number, but I would say over 300 volunteers in the elementary. Um, and I'm passing around a, a magazine, oops, about um, the kindergartens in the county. And when you look at that, you'll see that we have by far the largest kindergarten class. Um, some of them, some of the other kindergarten class are, classes are half the size that we have. Um, I think we are doing, our teachers are doing a super fabulous job. Um, and I think we've done a nice job bringing money into the district and I think um, our Northside teachers were very, very busy writing NELCO grants, and then many of them submitted NELCO grants, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, they took a lot of the teachers' time, and they um, asked for things that are very, very meaningful in supporting good instruction in the classroom, so I'm very proud of them. And that's all I have. Any questions for me? Thank you. Welcome. That's special ed. Um, we had, we had a small group of students from Lincoln High School who part participated in the um, Youth Mental Health Day at Newcastle. They actually led the walk holding the banner. Um, we also had a student who was um, a guest speaker. Um, so that was very exciting. That's in collaboration with the um, Systems of Care as well as the Suicide Coalition that we're involved with. Um, we've had our second to third and fourth to fifth grade transition days specifically for our special education students. They typically go twice on transition days just to help with that transition. Um, they've walked through the buildings, they've met their teachers, um, so that was very successful. Um, I want to thank the Y Teams um, Club. They sponsored a Jean Day for our family who lost a student. Um, to help defray some of those costs for that family, and they were very thankful and appreciative to not only Elwood City School District, but the MIU Force staff. Um, our district speech pathologists and school psychologists are currently working on 14 um, early intervention students who will be coming into districts, so we are preparing for them, completing evaluations and de determining if they qualify and what their placement are. Um, and we are also working on our students who will be going to VOTEC and getting all of those um, evaluations and IEPs ready. Um, and also, we will, at the next board meeting, we will be presenting, the speech pathologist will be <coughs> doing a presentation for the board, um, just 
for the special education portion that we've not done this year. And um, we've also will have, um, we will also be looking at the PSA, the public service announcement that was developed by um, Lincoln students, Mrs. De Mrs. Devin Wish, as well as produced by Mr. Frank Velotico. Um, and we have students who will be um, acknowledged at the um, Mental Health Summit at the end of June um, for their participation in that PSA, which is very exciting. Thank you. Question? Yeah. 14, Mr. Cooper, kids coming in school. Yeah. Um, that's actually low, and that is our total number. It is very dependent on whether or not they qualify for services or do not qualify for services. We have had up to 25 early intervention students coming in. So at this point, our numbers are, are pretty average. Um, and so those evaluations are being conducted to determine eligibility upon it. $387,000. Mr. Cortez is not here to comment on it, but I can say that I know they're adding a veterinary tech and an oil and, oil and gas type class. Uh, so that has increased the number of staff they have up there where the per pupil cost is now $12,500. Our total budget is about $1,175,000. And I do have a copy of the budget if anybody would be interested, <coughs> interested in it. Number three on the agenda is we are expecting proposals on Thursday for a computer lease uh, for the 166,120 for the replacement of the teacher uh, computers. Uh, so when that comes in on Thursday, I will tabulate it and try to have it ready for Thursday evening so the board can take action. Sure, I have a question on that. Sure. In our budget paper, we were told that that was going to be a $43,100 for your computer lease. Mm -hmm. So what's the increase in cost? Is that 43100 per year then? Yes. It is. So that times four will 160. Okay, correct. Thank you. Uh, bank depositories every year we name depositories for the various funds that we have. So we'll be using West Banco this year for our general payroll, athletic facility, cafeteria and activity funds, and PNC for the capital reserve fund. I'm going to skip the preliminary budget and kind of leave that for last. Uh, tax processing services, we do a uh, contract with Infocon to print our tax bills, to put them in envelopes, and to mail them out for us. I did receive the proposal from them today, and it's a 0 .002 cent increase. So really, it's a rate hole from last year. So we'll recommend their agreement on Thursday evening. I've not heard back from the pre-K people at this point in time for the contract to sell mills, so we'll just hold off until the June board meeting uh, for that contract. Um, cafeteria budget I want to kind of skip to and then uh, the Children's Museum uh, exhibit sale agreement this is the uh, grant that Mr. Keeley got for some materials for the Maker Lab so we have an agreement that he'll be buying a cabinet with various tools uh, and designs blueprints and so forth that will be used in that lab so we'll have an agreement uh, on Thursday for that particular agreement uh, as far as the budget goes, what I've done is I've put together another pack of information, which is up to date. So it's all the expenses, the revenues, the athletic fund, the capital reserve fund. And at this point, I kind of need some direction as to what you want me to do uh, for Thursday. Um, I guess you know, we'll talk about various potential tax changes. Uh, if you want to do that, I have to do that for May always be undone for June if that's what the wish of the boards are before it is. But if we choose to do nothing for Thursday, then that's how it will end up in June. So I'm looking for some direction as to what you'd like to have prepared. The numbers really haven't changed uh, from the last budget meeting that we had. 
I did uh, put the recap on the very first page, which is the discussion point that we had last Wednesday evening. And then behind that, I did put um, what changes in those would look like for various assessed values. And then again, everything else kind of remained the same from, from our last meeting. So I, I need some direction, I guess. Sir. You haven't heard anything from the governor? You're not going to hear anything from the governor, I bet, until July or August. If not later. How are we looking with this year's budget? I think we're getting pretty close to breaking, I hope. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't looked at it for several weeks because I've been out of other right. things. But when I did do some work, I mean, I think we're going to be right around breaking. here with the exception of Bob, we, uh, at the budget meeting, Bob, we uh, had discussed uh, you know, these different options that Mr. Zerone has uh, put out here for us. Yeah. Um, so we were kind of, I think, split a little bit down the, uh, the middle as far as what we uh, wanted to do for the uh, Mr. Zerone's budget. So, are there any uh, other Sorry. questions from the board? Any further discussion? Yeah, this still says that we're going to keep both elementary teachers. Something I wrote to say. Yeah, yeah, it's just all four. four. It's just talking about yeah. four. I guess for you, it says here uh, your budget that's been submitted reflects a loss of 155000 Yes. Now, does that, like, for example, in the very next, or the uh, item right before it, you're, you're selling meals to uh, pre K students and so forth? We're assuming that we'll get another agreement with them, but we don't know that for sure yet. He's asking about the pre K agreement. About the pre K, right? Yeah. yeah. We're assuming, we're assuming that that contract will come through. All right, now that, will that offset the 155,000 at all? That, that's in that, that is already assumed in that number.
and we're going to have we have ongoing talks with that, and I'm going to work with Mr. Silvich on on the concept and get that written out. So we're not sure if it'll actually be a teacher. The position might be an instructor, not a teacher. So it's definitely good. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, certification would be technology, I would imagine, still. So, so okay. technology certified staff. And that, and that would be that don't have to. That kind of goes the whole span of K through 12. Yeah, K 12 staff. state's going to do. And I hate to say, listen, we're going to hit the taxpayers for more money when we may be getting more money. I right. think uh, that this coming year, we bite the bullet and live with what we got and let's see what the state can do. I think this is around, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe for us, if we would have something in there now, it could be changed, but that would That's still correct. Doesn't mean that we're going to know any more come June than what we know right now. Right. At least our options would be open. Of course, options are still open even if we would say nothing now. The options yeah. to do anything in June would not be open okay. because what would happen, you, know, you could change board meeting dates, but you have to display it for 30 days. Okay. Yeah. So if you choose not to do anything now, then you could in a week or two, but by June 30th, you'd have to do something. If you put it in now, Take it out for June. Without 30 days right. notice. Yes. So, I'm just yeah. not, I'm not in favor of jumping in over here right now. You're talking about racing taxes. Correct. Yeah. I'm not in favor at this point. Okay. Do you understand what Mrs. Rose said? I mean, at, uh, if we don't have it in there at this point, our options are. <clears throat> have no options come, yeah, come we would. Yeah. If we uh, have something in there now we can take it out but we can't have it. I well, I actually put it in now and then we can actually say we can take it out. And on top of that I can always vote no. Well that that's the dilemma in itself because of the way the the position of the board is right now. Then that's what we have a bug on, on 
Thursday. So, I mean, just for the sake of <coughs> Mr. Zerone having direction for Thursday, it's, uh, from what I'm hearing, it's, it's no input. Okay. And the next item is the cafeteria budget. Again, I put together some information. I did mention that Mr. Stevenson alluded to $155,000 deficit in the cafeteria fund. So what I've done is I have uh, put together some pricing that other schools in the county have to kind of show you where we are. And I've included the detail of how we got to that $155,000, how we got to the deficit. Basically, how we get to the deficit is that we have contractual costs that we just really can't control. All the pricing that you see on that list, for the most part, uh, there are no union contracts. Most of it is either non-union work or it's contracted out actually to a nutrition or a medicine employee. So uh, we're kind of right in the middle of lunch price-wise. <clears throat> we can go forward and, and try to work work as best we can to avoid $155,000 loss in the cafeteria. Um, and Carl's done a good job doing that. We can put a small increase on to kind of get right and stay right in the middle price-wise with where we are in the cafeteria, uh, or we can do nothing. Uh, at this point, we do subsidize the cafeteria with a $50,000 transfer from the general fund into the cafeteria. But again, there's just not a whole lot we can do to control our costs because predominantly they're in wages and benefits. Yes, sir. What is Laurel serving for lunch? Blaming the honor one. I don't have any idea what Laurel's serving for lunch. Well, according to this, they're charging oh, 10 I'm bucks sorry, for lunch. I'm sorry, that's a dollar. I'm sorry. No. I'm <laughs> slipping, Mr. Stevens. It's not a dollar. Yeah, that's a dollar. <laughs> that's a dollar. <laughs> I'm sorry. But we're kind of right in the middle. And the, the first option would be a 15 cent breakfast increase and a 10 cent lunch increase. Uh, the second option is a 15 cent breakfast and a 15 cent lunch. I think raising it by 15 cents of lunch and breakfast is reasonable. I think so. I think so too. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the consensus. That's what we'll have prepared for Thursday. How, how many breakfast students do we serve? Um, around 230 to 250 a day, and that said all four locations. Okay, and then out of how many of those, how many of those are free and reduced? I can tell you all that. Give okay. me just one second. Now, how does that work? Do we get compensated for free and reduced? Yeah, lunches? for for the free meals, we get reimbursed. We get reimbursed for paid, reduced, and free. We get paid, reimbursed the most for free. And we're reduced, and then the least amount for a paid. So I guess my question then is, do they just give us a flat reimbursement rate, or does it reflect what we charge to get reimbursed? It, this is, everybody in the state gets reimbursed the same, the same rate. Okay. But there are catches with being reimbursed. Don't they have to get certain things in order yes. to be qualified? And that's Carl like a lot of the that problems come into place is the kids don't necessarily always get everything Yeah, if you've got a student, to. a student has to take three components of, of an offered lunch. Um, one of those components has to be a fruit or a vegetable. So if they have three things on their tray, this is just simplified, but if they have three things on their tray and one of them is a vegetable, we can charge the lunch price and get the reimbursement. But if they only take two things and we have to charge an hour cart price, we're not getting reimbursement at that point in time. Does that answer your question? Yes. Now, just for your information, for the full 13 14 school year, uh, we had 138,000 lunches served, 45,000 of, 45, of which were paid, free were 81,000, and reduced were 12,000. So we were about 93,000 free or reduced. Of And that's all I have on the revenue finance. Thank God. Excuse me. Properties and transportation. Some uh, facility requests. We 
uh, EC Chamber of Commerce is requesting permission to use Elm Stadium to track restrooms for the sixth grade class to engage in phys ed activities as part of viewing Park of Palooza on Thursday, May 21st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Amateur Baseball Federation requests permission to use Sanders Field concession stand and press box to host a Beaver County Colt League All-Star Game on Tuesday, June 30th, 2015 from 4.30 to 10 p.m. EC Cheering Boosters request permission to use Helling Stadium field, track, and restrooms or Hartman multi-purpose room in case of rain on Tuesday, June 16th and Wednesday, June 17th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. for a cheering mini camp for children ages 4 to 12. And the First United Methodist Church requests permission to use LHS Small Gym on Wednesday, June 17th from 5 to 8 p.m. They will be holding a basketball camp for ages pre-K through 6 as part of their annual vacation Bible school program. Uh, Mr. Al Kenton will supervise that program. Question, Mr. Schuster. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Schuster. I'm ready. I have something here for you, number one, so don't let me forget to give that to you. And then uh, number two, with uh, the thing here about baseball and hosting the All-Star game, what is the procedure with uh, replacing lights over there? I mean, how does that get uh, set up and, and like? You mean there, you mean just changing the light bulbs or yeah, changing there's a the bunch light? that are, are out? I don't know if you've seen any, but uh, there's a, a bunch. Usually, if it's on the first base side um, or the third base side, we can have the fire department do it. They're very willing to work with us on that. The outfill, we have to wait till it's really dry. For the fire truck to drive out there, and then it doesn't cost us any money other than the price of the ball. Right. Um, if we have to rent a JLG, then you start getting into the thousands of dollars. Right. Um, how does that process get initiated? I could just go over chain. You know, like I said, on first base side and third base side, all I gotta do is make a phone call. Okay. That, that's something I don't check all the time. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't know. I didn't take a count, but I, I bet there's a good half a dozen anyway that are out on first and third base side. Yeah, so, usually Mr. Foti is all over me as far as getting those lights changed. He hasn't said a word to me this year, so when he doesn't say anything to me, I just assume they're all working. Right. So, so I'll unassume that, and I'll call the fire department first thing in the morning. <coughs> you have balls. I uh, what? Do you have balls? balls? Yeah, I think we do have some left over. Yeah, it's, it's bad. I'll check. Thank you. Bus driver. We all got that. Hey, yeah. I think everybody in the room probably said that. <laughs> we just didn't bring it up. Light bulbs. <laughs> Levity never hurts. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schuster. You're welcome. Bus driver and close the list from EC Transit uh, requesting additional driver be approved for the remainder of the 14 15 school year and for the 15 16 school year. Bid tabulations for general art, athletics, and custodial supplies have been received and tabulated and will be submitted for board consideration at the regular meeting. Portersville Christian Transportation Contract. Portersville Christian School submitted a proposal providing provide transportation services for 1516 at a rate of $177 per day. The rate reflects a 1.1% increase or $2 per day increase. Uh, we are recommending the proposal be accepted and placed on the agenda at the regular board meeting. Student affairs. Field trips and social events. Uh, this first one we got just after the last board meeting, so we got to almost kind of get a head nod because the vote is this takes place uh, before Thursday. So um, Ms. Jonica Walters is requesting permission for approximately 25 gifted students to attend Physics Day. Um, education days at Kennywood. Uh, the bus leaves Wednesday, May 13th, departing at 7.30, returning at 6.30, and costs will be covered by the gifted budget. And uh, due to this being this Wednesday, um, and ask for some formal approval so she can go ahead and take care of that. Uh, 
Chair of that. Any objections to that from the board? Dan Morgan, Chairman Club, response to request permission for approximately 40 club members to travel to Kennywood Park on Sunday, May 24th, starting at 9 a.m. and returning at 6.30 p.m. Costs will be covered by the student raised funds. Secondary student handbook, secondary administration recommends the enclosed changes to the secondary student handbook for the 15-16 school year. Um, Act 80 days early dismissal, um, enclosed are listed the Act 80 early dismissal days for 15-16 school year. And that will be submitted for board approval. Regular meeting. Every two years we have to get memorandums of understanding with the police departments that uh, are in our jurisdiction or we're in our jurisdiction. So the 15-16 agreements between the Ellison Area School District, Ellison City Borough, and that should be the Ellison City State Police also. Pennsylvania State Police will be presented for board consideration at the regular meeting. Uh, the agreements outline the procedures that will be followed in the event of violent incidents that occur on school grounds. So those we have to do that every two years. And yes, elementary Florence County Barracks. I'm sorry, yeah. Yep. State Police. Elwood City doesn't have State Police. I'm sorry, did I say Elwood City? I saw Elwood City here. Yeah, Borough Police. That's the same State Police. Elementary textbook adop adoption. Uh, close the list of textbooks the administration is recommending for reading grades K through 4. Uh, the textbook committee, so a lot of them are here right now. Um, analyzed several pr presentations. Um, looked at from McGraw Hill, Pearson, and Harcourt careful discussion, analysis of the year-long pilot program, um, decided that McGraw-Hill Reading Wonders and Wonderworks for Special Ed fit our needs. The samples are back there. Um, I know in the past that uh, we have displayed textbooks for 30 days, but um, talking to Mr. DeCaro, that what's not in our policy that we do that, and um, he looked it up in the state code. It doesn't say that, it just says that they have to be ordered between April and August, and uh, so we're hoping that you would approve that now so that we can go ahead and get those ordered so they get into the teacher's hands before they leave for the summer um, for their request. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Stevens. Whoever was on the committee, I don't know if any of them were here. Start, raise your hand. Okay. You guys did a well of a job. Thank you. Thank you. I looked at all three. Cry Hill and my hands down. They did a wonderful job reviewing it. They all did. Uh, I didn't, uh, and our court didn't impress me that much. Here. The other one didn't care. But this one did, we probably don't. And last but not least, um, requesting a calendar change for this year. Um, Administration is recommending that May 29th be a Act 80 half day for all district students instead of just um, Hartman and Lincoln. This will allow teachers to complete the state mandate SLOs and differentiated supervision model and portfolios. Just to kind of give you a background, and I can't remember if I put that in the letter or not, but um, Northside especially has been hit pretty hard with uh, a lot of the things that we're doing with the dyslexia pilot and the uh, hybrid learning, and a lot of their recent in-service has been on that, and they're still going to get hit pretty with that. So. Um, and I think that's reflected also in the 1516 um, calendar for Act 80 days that they get, you know, we do a full one at the end of the year, two at the end of the year also. Um, there's just so many state mandates for teachers to complete. Um, and but with us getting some of these new grants and things that are going on, kind of put an added burden. Um, especially for next year, uh, we have suicide prevention that we've got to teach and teachers have to go through training and Child abuse was added, so again, so there's just a lot of state mandates coming down the pipe. Um, we're still under the required hours for instruction in both elementary and secondary, so I'm um, just asking for that change to help us out here towards the end of the year because it's it's pretty crazy. So that was the reason for that change. I believe that's all I have. There are a couple of additions to the Go ahead. Um, I guess attached to your uh, communicator update, uh, 
there was one additional change to the um, secondary handbook. Yes. Yeah, that is yeah, well, there's an additional change to the secondary handbook which was attached, and then there was an update to the substitute list. And we also included the minutes from the April 9th and uh, 29th meeting. And then I, I have a letter here that was addressed to Mr. Newpari. Apparently, just opened it and placed it on my desk here. Uh, the Borough of Elwood City is asking uh, order to forgive taxes on the property purchased at 509 uh, 11 Lawrence Avenue and 508 Bell Avenue uh, in the amount of about $1,300. I'm not sure what they plan to do with the property. I can find that out before Thursday, but we do have a letter here asking that um, we go ahead and forgive those taxes. So I'll get additional information. I'll have it on the agenda if you choose them before it's fine. If not, then we can just take it on Thursday. Question about the, um, the addition to the secondary handbook. I just read what it, what it was. Is that normal that they are not allowed, the senior pitchers are not allowed to have folders on? That's something new that's being added. It's, I mean, it's a it was never put in writing. It was always mentioned to the students and clerks uh, mentioned as well. But now we want to put it on paper. Um, I it just fits with the school. It just fits with the dress code policy right now. Just trying to be consistent. It's just for the yearbook photo. Right, but it just seems like if that if they have an outfit that they want them strapped with. And it's not well, you your wear, family. Yeah, but you could have something on that your shoulders and something else is more more revealing than whether your shoulders are out is my point. So I just I didn't know if this was something that was in the past or if it was something that we're adding to. I think if we go back to the school code, the dress code, stick to that thing that I brought up. But you know as well as I do, or I'll have or somebody will come in with their shoulders down to here and that down to out here. there. Exactly. Hey, well, there's no policy against it, but there is now. I had another question, too, going back to that computer lease. How many computers are we buying or releasing for this lease? So we have 151 teachers, I think, right? 160. It's 160 computers and 160 blocks. Okay. And 160 bags. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I probably said that's around a thousand to eleven hundred dollars per computer mm -hmm. for four years. I mean, do you think we could purchase computers at that price and docks and bags at that price, or do you think we're getting a good deal? I guess. What kind of computers are we getting? Their their HP machines are actually business class machines because they 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 have to be higher price because they have the dock and the public. Right. Um, have real good luck in the past 10 years with HP and the docks that just saves us a whole lot of plugging and unplugging. They look basically exactly like what we have now, but they're just faster and okay. better. I was just curious. And that gives me a few extras in case right. something happens. Okay. But yeah, it's 160 or 166 or something like that. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else from the board? Go back to uh, visitors. Anybody have anything from visitors? Mr. Cunningham. I was just curious, were there any uh, retirees from the teaching staff this year? Or are there any incentives out there to coax some of the older ones to uh, go ahead and retire? Or are we losing any ground? I mean, do we have to hire anybody? Or? We have four retirees are replacing four positions, so uh, we there's nothing in the uh, uh, I think the teachers that took advantage of the early retirement took advantage of it. Um, so I don't think there's any added incentives. We didn't do any added incentives to try to reach down further. So and what kind of money was that savings? Do you have any general idea? The savings was about depending on the medical. Program that the income the teacher will have is between thirty-eight and fifty thousand dollars for all four total. Pardon me. That was a savings for teacher. All. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> gonna say. So that that was kind of helpful to the budget then. And 
moving on to another question. Who designates these bus stops? I mean, does the board set them or the superintendent? Or how do they get? Um, the uh, bus company has a software program that they plug in all the kids and kind of draw a circle around it. And I brought it to the attention of the board uh, probably over a year ago. There's a spot there on the, the Wurttemberg cutoff coming right off of 488. There's a little girl that gets off in the evening. I'm sure she gets picked up in the morning just across the traffic there. The people that come down around that bend, I mean, it's a blind bend. And I mentioned it at the time. I mean, it's worse in the morning when she gets picked up, I'm sure, because she could be right there in the traffic. At least she, they have the whole bus to run into when she gets let off. But that's not, she just exits to the right and that's the driveway. There's another, right in that same area, that Lundy Lane, there's a couple people that get let off. I just thought if you could maybe coordinate something with that church that sits right there on before Lundy Lane heading north on the Wurttemberg cutoff, maybe because parents wait on Lundy Lane in their cars. And it makes it tough for, I mean, there's the water companies back there, so they have 18 wheelers that pull in there and stuff. Not to say that it's, they're parking in the neighbor's yard, which I know is not appreciated, but uh, if you could designate drop off there at the church parking lot, then the parents can park in the church parking lot probably, and the kids can get their car there, and they won't be blocking traffic coming in on one but those two areas are, I mean, they're close to where I live, so I get to see them more often than not. But just a thought of it could be, I mean, you're talking a half of, well, not a quarter of a block from, to alleviate the problems. In that case, would they still be crossing the road, though, to get over to the church? <clears throat> not the bus pulls in there. Not the bus pulls in, okay. Yeah, we have to coordinate with them then. See if they want I mean, either way, either way, it's a bad time because if they stop and let them off, it's no different than if they stop and let them off at Lundy Lane, other than the traffic. Of like the I know with the curb you're talking, the bend you're talking about, the blind spot coming around, but yeah. that's more of an open area by the church. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Just thoughts if uh, it might be worth a little proactive. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Okay. Anything else from visitors? Any further from the board? Go on, yeah. I just want to thank Mr. Mancini for being receptive um, to listening to the needs of the teachers and requesting um, the 29th day to be um, an insert day for the entire district. Um, that would be a huge help for the state mandates, especially for the buildings that did not would not receive that release time. So I appreciate that, Mr. Mancini, and I hope you take that into consideration. Thank you. Adjourn to go into executive session for personnel. Oh, you were lucky. You should have stayed. <laughs>